How's it going, everybody? Welcome back for another edition of the Knights Baseball Roundup. It's been a little bit, but we appreciate you coming back for another episode. Thanks for having me. Um, so you, you guys currently have a record of 15, 17, and 1. And if, if someone would have told you with 19 games left, that would be your record. You would be the third in the NEC. If the playoffs started, you'd be second. What would you say? Uh, I'm very happy with what we're doing so far. Obviously, we still got a ways to go. 19 games is a lot of games, so a lot can happen. You know, 15 and 17 could be 15 and 36 if you lose all 19 games. So there's still work to be done. Uh, I believe we're one or two wins away from having the best record since 2000, and that's kind of what I had told the kids at the beginning was one of the goals. I don't want us to lose track of our goals. That's one of our original goals. Obviously, anything over that is gravy, and it's great, and you know, I just don't think we're ready to talk about those things just yet. So we want to rewind a little bit. A couple weekends ago, you had a big series against Wagner. Took three of four. First game was a loss, but we're not going to talk about that. Let's skip over Sounds that. good. So in the first game of the doubleheader on Saturday, Borelli goes a complete game, one hit shutout, gets another NEC Rookie of the Week honors. What has he been able to do right? Is he blowing people away, or is he keeping people off balance, or what has he been doing? I think Joe Borelli's got, he's a great location pitcher. He hits his spots. He's got a good fastball. Hits 85-86 has good stuff to go with it. And I think that one of the things I've said about Joe Borelli from the day I first went to see him and recruited him was he doesn't pitch like a freshman. He pitches like a much more mature, experienced pitcher. He doesn't get rattled. He doesn't get easily upset. He has a good idea of what he's trying to do out there. And, and obviously his results, you can't, I mean, when you start your college career with two straight shutouts right. and a one hitter included, that's a pretty impressive way to start your career. And, you know, I've been saying for a while, the BB boys, by the time they're juniors and seniors, they're going to be heard from, and Borelli's being heard from already. Well, another one of your BB boys, Butler, pitched well in the second game, but he was helped out by the offense. You got five runs in the first two innings. So how much does that take the pressure off him when he does have that lead? I think it definitely helps, especially when it's a young pitcher. I think for a young pitcher, if you give him a little more breathing room, they're just not as uptight or nervous about pitching that day. And you know, Brennan's had a hard time with getting runs scored for him, so that was a good thing for him that he got a couple of runs and was able to relax a little bit. And again, you know, he brings the ball up there, he hits 90 every so often on the gun. The, the kid's got a great future ahead of him, and I think they're both going to be outstanding pitchers for us as time goes on. And then you were able to round out the series with a 4-3 to three extra inning uh, win. Kyle Weeks gets the walk-off single. Mike Eliason is just a horse, goes 12 innings on the mound. When That's kind of unheard of for a guy to go that long. So when you see that, thing, are you communicating with him, or how do you kind of decide that he's going to be able to go the whole 12 innings? One of the problems in baseball is people talk innings instead of pitches. And uh, Mike actually threw less pitches than he threw in the nine-inning complete game at Mama. Probably press him like when he was in the 10th inning, he, was at, he, he hit his 100th pitch on the last pitch of the 10th inning. So... Yeah, the, I mean, the kid just had a real low pitch count. I did tell him in the 12th that that was going to be it because I think he started in with 120 something, and I said, This is your last inning no matter what. But uh, yeah, he's my workhorse, and he's our go to guy, and he's our leader. And that was one of the most exciting games to watch from a fan's point of view. Uh, you know, top of the 12th, they had a man on second, one out, and Shane Siebel threw out the go-ahead run at the plate, and then bottom of the inning, Kyle Weeks gets a big two-out hit to win the game. He's just a real good team effort, a lot, a lot of guys contributing, a lot of good plays defensively. Had opportunities where we didn't score. They had many opportunities, too, where we held them, did a real nice job, and, and it was a real good game for coming together and, and really becoming a solid team, and I, I thought it was a major win for us. I know you guys like to emphasize the NEC games, put a lot of emphasis on that. But last Wednesday, you went out of conference, went up to Army, and beat them 6-4. to four. Your bullpen of Khaleesi, Perline, and Snyder really came in and shut the door. So what does it mean to you guys to be able to beat a team that has won 24 games up to that point? That was a great game. Army scored three in the top, uh, bottom of the first against us. And obviously, they're 24-8, and eight, and they're kind of like, okay, here we go trouble ahead. And then top of the second, Shane Siebler hits a three-run homer. He's our nine hitter. He hits a three-run homer out of park to tie the game. And you could just feel the momentum shift. Eric Anderson came in through four innings. I think he gave up one run over the four innings. 
and uh, we went into the seventh, eighth, ninth inning. I think tied at four four. I love their bullpen. I know they're freshmen, but they've been very solid for us. Khaleesi, Perline, and Snyder. And Khaleesi ended up picking up the win. We scored two runs, one I think in the seventh and one in the eighth, and ended up winning 6-4. And Snyder picked up his seventh save. I have a lot of faith in those guys, and I really, I've gone to that bullpen every chance I've gotten. Uh, I know Yona had two men on in the eighth and, and had a kid at the plate with two out, and he struck the kid out to get us out of that inning and that jam. And, They've just been performing real well. They really have. And I'm very happy with their progress. And again, they're freshmen, so good things are ahead. You guys played another out of conference series. You headed to Radford. Long road trip for you guys. Um, in the first game, kept it close. In the second two, they kind of handled you guys. But what do you take from that experience of going on that road trip? And how do you kind of tell the guys to put, that, put the losses behind them and just focus on the NEC stuff? Well, one of the things I told them was I said, this is an uphill game. This is a game that I booked to give you the experience of seeing what a top 100 team plays like. They're 72nd in the country. At one time, they were number one in defense in the country. So it's not just that they're a good team, but they're a team that I kind of want us to model after, being a strong pitching and defensive team right. and get your timely hits. And, you know, obviously the one nothing game, that's exactly what they had done. They, they made, took advantage of a triple, hit a sacrifice fly to bring the run home right away, and then, and then the pitcher made the run stand up. And, you know, they had a radar gun on the uh, scoreboard there, and first day's pitcher was throwing 96, 97 consistently. It was probably the best pitcher I've seen in about 10 years. I mean, he was outstanding. I was yeah. really impressed with him. You know, and their third starter was, you know, he wasn't quite as good. He was only throwing 91. So, <laughs> so when you're playing a team like that, it's uphill, and it's, you know, there's a reason they're ranked 72nd. And, we're, you know, we came in a season ranked about 220 spots behind them. <laughs> so that, that says a lot. That, that uh, To lose to one nothing says a lot. That we're really coming around. Yeah, we got hammered the second and third day. And I basically told the kids, I said, you know, this is kind of like fantasy land. This was, this was a chance to just play somebody good and see how it would go. It, you hope, and, and one of the worries you have is, does that carry over to the league? That right. you, you didn't play well and stuff. I mean, that's the chance you take as a coach, whether it was a smart move or a dumb move. Obviously, you book games a year or two in advance. <laughs> there was no way I could have known that we were going to be uh, in the situation we are in a conference right. going into that. So, you know, you take it for what it's worth. I mean, I, I still think it was a great experience. It was a nice trip, great weather, and we played a very good team. That, you know, we didn't beat ourselves. They beat us. Right. You know, Craig was phenomenal in the game. He lost one nothing. He pitched a three-hitter. I don't know how much more I could ask for. So, right. And then this weekend you return home to play Central Connecticut State in what looks to be a very big series for you guys. The last two years you're able to split games with them. So what are you hoping to see from your guys this weekend? Well, I'm going to disagree with the fact that it's a big series. Though actually I guess this time of year they're all big series. But I think we've put ourselves in a position where now it's about adding to the win total. It doesn't matter who we beat. It doesn't matter... Well, I guess it doesn't matter how many times we beat them, but now it's just trying to add to that win total to put ourselves in a situation where maybe, you know, what was once unthinkable might be able to happen this season. I don't want to get there yet because, like I've said, I don't want that to become all of a sudden, well, then it's a disappointment if we don't get there. Right. You know, we started this season coming off of being picked last, coming off of a 12-38 and 38 year, and coming off of having 16 new freshmen playing. Mm -hmm. We were picked dead last. Nobody expected us to do anything. We've already, in half a conference season, won more games than we won all last year. So this season's a success. You know, I don't care if we win two games the rest of the year. It's a success compared to where we've been. It's a, definitely a step in the right direction. We have definitely stepped up the ladder. The question is, how big a jump up the ladder are we going to go? And yeah, you know, in that sense, it's a big series, and each time we keep winning some series, mm -hmm. you know, we've won the series at home and that's the thing I keep emphasizing we'll always win at home try to win every series at home and if we can do that again we'll be in pretty good shape right that's the one point that I wanted to get to is earlier in the season you said to make that next step and kind of be a, a good team you have to be a dominant team at home and why have you guys been able to do that so far yeah I think we're nine and two our last 11 at home and, and because it's your field you know you, get, you practice on it every day you get used to the, the nicks and crannies of your field 
your pitchers know the mound. They know you know the feel of the mound and the dirt and the, how to pitch there. And, mm -hmm. and I think there's just you, you got to feel comfortable at home. You have to feel that when you play at home, it's harder for another team to beat you there. And I think so far we've established that. Beating Sacred Heart three out of four at home, I mean, the defending champs, I thought that was a great series for us. As you said, the 12 inning game against Wagner, there were many opportunities to lose that game. They found a way to win. Another great example of just being dominant at home. And, and we've got two home series left in the conference, mm -hmm. so that's eight more home games. If we can keep that dominance going at home, we'll be in good shape. Well, Coach, we really appreciate the time this week. Thank you, Gavin. And uh, we'll tune in next time for another edition of the Knights Baseball Roundup. Thank you.